breaking now at 6. The chairman of Papa John's stepping down. The controversial comments causing him to resign. Stormy Daniels arrested while performing. Why her attorney thinks this is a setup. Then this. And you walk out the door and it just, it smells like a sewer system, you know, like a septic system. All that blue-green algae creeping closer to homes in southwest Florida. Why it could get even worse if releases pick back up. Live from ABC7, this is News at 6. Some new video this morning showing that blue-green algae bloom in North Fort Myers. The Calusa water just keeps water keepers recorded this video. They sent it to us. The algae now taking a toll on Southwest Florida coasts and our tourism industry. Thank you so much for watching ABC 7. I'm Jen Stacy, And I'm Emily Burris. All of that blue-green algae is here because of the water releases coming from Lake Okeechobee. The Army Corps of Engineers paused them for the last three days. Those days are now up, so a lot of people are wondering exactly when those releases are going to start up again and how much more water is coming our way. And we have much more coming up uh, when we'll know the fate of the water releases, for example. But first, we do want to talk about our weather. Meteorologist Jim Dickey is in the Hurricane Center with more on what we can expect as we head outside this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Emily. Of course, good Thursday morning to you at home as well. Southwest Florida, pretty quiet as we start our day. Temperatures in the middle 70s. Pretty close to average for this time of year. Hanging out at 75 degrees right now in the Fort Myers area. Dew points in the mid-70s, too. So, as we expect, it is pretty humid to start our day. There's temperatures across southwest Florida, middle and lower 70s. 72, your cool spots right now. Arcadia, Lehigh, Acres. If you were this earlier on, Naples was hanging out around 78, 79. Back to 76 now at the airport there. So, not too bad all across the board. Here's ABC7 real-time radar. Just about everybody is dry. I have been tracking, though, a few downpours here offshore in Collier County. Actually, a little thunderstorm now. You see the lightning strike. But some of that rain, light rain, working its way towards and on to Marco Island. little area of light rain just moved its way northward. Now a few more downpours lifting north towards uh, Caxambas here and eventually will move on to Marco Island. So have the umbrella with you if you're headed out the door in the next 10 minutes there on Marco. Otherwise, dry. And just that everybody will stay dry through these morning hours. The much better rain chances arrive as we work our way into the afternoon. I'm going to focus in on where the best rain chances are today. I'm going to take you through our storm tracker model. That's coming up back here in about 10 minutes. All right, Jim, thanks. Right now, ABC7 continues to follow that crash out on State Road 82. We've been telling you about it all morning. This is in Lehigh Acres. Florida Highway Patrol now tells us State Road 82 is shut down at Rue LeBeau Circle. This is some new video just into our newsroom from the scene. All lanes of State Road 82 are blocked right now. We're working to find out exactly what happened here to cause this crash. We'll bring you the very newest information throughout the morning. And as those lanes reopen, we'll keep you updated here on our traffic updates on ABC7. For instant updates on all of our stories, download our news app. In only a number of hours, we will soon know the fate of Lake O releases and the algae blooms here in southwest Florida. The Army Corps of Engineers is making an announcement about those releases sometime today. The engineers paused those releases from Lake Okeechobee for the past three days. Well, time is up. Those releases will soon start again. The good news is they're not happening today. That's according to the Army Corps of Engineers. Kevin Ruane, the mayor of Sanibel, says he got word that Lake O releases will pick back up again by the end of the week. Meanwhile, people living along McGregor Boulevard say they've spent a lot of money to live on or near the water, but the algae is really beginning to put a damper on their living conditions. One woman we talked to says she's glad that she rented her home instead of buying it. It's just all green. Everything's green, nasty, and I'm thinking when it dries up, it gets on the land, then it dries up, and it goes airborne. That's going to affect everybody. You just just think that it's going to be repercussion after repercussion. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says it will be making an announcement today about the future of those water releases. They didn't say exactly what time that announcement will happen, but we will bring it to you when it does. Overnight, we've learned that Florida U.S. Senator Marco Rubio would like business owners who are impacted by this toxic algae to get some federal assistance. Senator Rubio asked the Small Business Administration to open a recovery center. You may remember the same thing happened two years ago during another algae crisis. 
Homeowners in Cape Coral say the smell of algae is getting worse. This is some video from along a canal. You can see that thick blue-green mass in the center there. Clumps of algae now floating along the water. People living near these canals say they've seen the algae for several days, but the smell wasn't as bad until recently. Some are now moving their belongings before the water rises. See, it's getting high right now, the tide, and I really don't want it to get up here on the, the concrete dock. Now, we asked city leaders if there was anything they could do to clean the canals. They say this isn't a local issue. State agencies are looking for solutions. Despite the algae alerts and the warnings of health risks like these, people are still swimming, a lot of them exposing themselves to possible toxins in the algae. Doctors say we can't take this lightly. Coming into contact with algae can cause you to have a mild allergic reaction. Uh, things like watery eyes, itching, skin irritation. Florida Department of Health says some blue-green algae blooms can produce chemicals called cyanotoxins. In high concentrations, those chemicals can affect your liver, your nervous system, and your skin. Most often, people accidentally drink the water while swimming where algae blooms are. I think the most danger would be to people who are living near ponds or lakes or, or, or live in communities where there's an overgrowth. If you experience any symptoms of getting in the water, health experts say that you should call your doctor. But a lot of you have been reaching out to us, algae causing concerns about the water and if our drinking water is still okay. A viewer sent us this question wanting to know what officials are doing to make sure that our water is safe. Well, coming up this morning at 6.30, ABC7 is getting you more on why you may not need to worry about the water you're drinking. We'll show you where it's coming from and how it's being treated. It's coming up. Breaking at six, Papa John's founder John Schneider is resigned as the chairman of the company's board after saying a racial slur. This happened during a conference call in May. The conference call was part of a role-playing exercise for him. It was intended to prevent more controversy for him after he had criticized NFL players kneeling during the national anthem. Company officials with Papa John say that they will now appoint a new chairman in the next few weeks. Adult film star Stormy Daniels was arrested at an Ohio strip club. Her lawyer says she's accused of following a customer, allowing a customer to touch her while she was on stage in a non-sexual way. Daniels' lawyer says this is a setup that is, quote, politically motivated. She was scheduled to perform today at Sirens Gentlemen's Club in Ohio. Apparently, touching at a strip club is against the law in Ohio. And we're following this breaking news. I want to take you back to Brussels. I've been watching what's been going on in the NATO summit. And in fact, just a few moments ago, two officials say the entire alliance is now an emergency session following President Trump's demands for allies to double their defense spending. Now, what we're looking at right now is file footage of uh, the summit that's been going on since Monday or Tuesday. Allied nations contribute 2% of GDP to defense, of course, and yesterday the president requests nations contribute at least 4%, and that's why NATO uh, allies are now in this emergency session. Well, shortly after the president's statement, a declaration was signed by the U.S. and European allies saying that all nations are committed to improving the balance of sharing the costs and the responsibilities of alliance membership. And in fact, I want to show you a live look. I want to take you to Brussels, if we can pull up that live picture. Here it is right here. Here it is on your screen. You're getting a live look now. It's starting to fill up with people from the press, but you're not going to see anybody from NATO on that stage for a little while. That's because they're all in a private room right now. They've asked everybody who's not involved with the NATO alliance to leave the room. And if you are a member of the NATO alliance, you are asked to leave your phone outside of the room. They don't want any live tweeting, any Facebooking. They don't want any words to get leaked out to the public right now. That's how important this emergency session is. Well, following this specific session, I want to remind you that uh, days are now, or well, what about a day or so, I guess, before President Trump meets one-on-one -on -one with Vladimir Putin. And in the United Kingdom, there are also going to be protests planned as the president is expected to leave for London today. London is gearing up for their biggest protests in years. In fact, activists say they plan to fly that, you know, perhaps you saw this news, uh, a big baby balloon over the city tomorrow as a representation of Donald Trump. But the president expected to meet with the queen, also expected to meet with Prime Minister Theresa May. Once he gets up to London, we, of course, are going to let you know. We'll follow this story and bring you updates. Jen. All right, Craig, thank you so much. Some new video for you this morning of the soccer team rescued from that cave in Thailand. The team was seen wearing masks, gowns, and waving at family members through protective glass. 
Some of the parents were in tears. You can only imagine as they looked at their children for the first time in a long time through the glass. Family members weren't allowed to enter the room where they are being treated because of some fears still of infection. Doctors say the boys will likely be allowed to leave that hospital after a week. I can't imagine finally oh, getting to see this. Yes. Wow. Well, this morning, rescuers are describing the operation to save the team from the cave and just how daring it was. After we located them, the most difficult was just the access. You know, they were so far back into a cave that's extremely tricky. Uh, and then on top of that, cold, flooded waters with almost no visibility, uh, pinch points that created even more, you know, dangerous areas for divers and the children. Rescuers went on to say that bringing this team out of the cave was one of the most difficult and historic rescues they've ever done because something like this hasn't happened before. Incredible. It is. Well, 610 is the time as Florida's primary gets closer. A new report says the state isn't doing enough to get people registered to vote, but changes could be on the way. According to a report by the Center for American Progress, the state could restore felons' rights to vote. They could also institute automatic registration, which would register you as soon as you move to the state of Florida. Doing both of these things alone could get 2 million more voters registered in our state. The report also suggests allowing people to register on Election Day to vote. As for felons getting their right to vote, that might actually be decided come November. A constitutional amendment to restore felons' voting rights would pass if 60 percent of voters approve it. We know that scammers sometimes can take advantage of celebrities. Yeah, this morning one celebrity is calling them out on social media. The warning that Tyler Perry has for you about scams he's been the target of connected to free giveaways. Plus a man woken up out of his sleep by that, a boa constrictor. How it got inside his house, coming up.